Hey guys, this is Chris, and the Federal Express Man was just here. We have my winnings from last week's auctions at Pieces of the Ocean. Uh, I'm trying a new kind of acclimation process at this point, and I think it's something for us all to think about. What I did was, as soon as I got the bags out of the styrofoam container, I measured the temperature. In, in the water and the water was measuring 78 degrees which is exactly what the temperature is in my tank then I ran a specific gravity and the specific gravity in the bags was 35 parts per million and in my tank it's 35 parts from per million so I know the salinity is the same then I quickly did with my Hannah checker alkalinity testing on both the water in my tank and the water in the bags and here's where I think my acclimation is going to take a lot longer than usual. In the bags, um, specifically, if you see right there, the bag that my pectinia was in, the alkalinity was 6.8. The alkalinity in my tank is 9.7. So my concern is you know, we don't like to raise alkalinity too quickly. And I think we do a lot of things when it comes to acclimating corals, and we don't necessarily do it using science. We do it using a gestalt. We hang bags in our sump or in our tank to bring the water up at temperature. We drip acclimate for, you know, you know, people describe a period of time, people describe an amount of water. So what I'm gonna do here is going to be doing this a little more scientific. I'm going to drip, drip acclimate for about an hour. I'm going to retest the alkalinity in the water, see what we brought it up to, and then I'm going to slowly continue to drip acclimate until a point where I think we're ready at that point to um, dip in coral RX. Uh, I've, I've already inspected the corals, they look great. Um, let's go from there and you'll get to see them underneath the t5 lighting hopefully a little bit later so i'm going to cut the video for now i'm going to come back in a little bit and let's see what they look like hey guys here we are about two and a half hours later it took seemingly forever to get the kh up uh, for those of you who don't remember it started at about 6.8 in the bag that the pectinia was in my tank is 9.7 I was able to get it up to just uh, about nine. So I figured after two and a half hours and watching the temperature in the acclimation uh, container drop a little bit, I decided that it was probably enough stress for the coral. I also did a really thorough inspection before I threw them in the tank and did not dip them because I thought, you know, dealing with the stress of going to a much higher KH. I thought would probably you know be more than enough for them to tolerate rather than um, you know that and then dipping them in some coral rx or something so i really took a thorough look at them everybody's been investigating them they've been in the tank for about five minutes uh, my butterfly is over there my mandarin is over there that little frag rack stays in my sump and i think there are some copepods that have been hanging out on it and I think that's why the mandarin and the butterfly came over. All in all the coral looks very healthy. Uh, the one thing I'm a little bit disappointed in is that the pectinia under actinic light really glows purple and under my T5 lighting has more of a brownish hue to it. So I'd like to at some point add a reef bright high output strip to my tank just to see how things look. Um, with a little bit more actinic light. But I'm really happy with the purchases. The Red Dragon Acropora in the front is a tiny bit small, but it's incredibly healthy. It's a very old frag, as you can see, because of all the coralline on it. Something I've wanted for a long time is right next to it, which is the Bazooka Joe Chalice. Then um, Kenny hooked me up with a really nice piece of war coral. The coloring is spectacular, even under the T5 lighting. And then the holy grail coral for me is that pectinia. And like I said, I think it kind of doesn't look as good now as it does under the LEDs. So we may have to add some LEDs to the tank 
uh, just to make even some of my if we come to my euphelia even some of my euphelia look a little washed out under the T5s that being said though the small amount of SPS I have in the tank looks awesome the clam looks awesome underneath it the hammers the anemones everybody loves it um, Avilopora the Space Invader Pectinia. So now I think it's just a question of dialing in a little bit more actinic and and going from there. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this is gonna cause some of you guys to think about how how we acclimate corals. Maybe we need to do a little bit more of a scientific job instead of just a knee-jerk response of a of a certain time frame, looking at what the water is like in the bags. Um, the you know a little bit of history on why I did this I don't know why but at this point the audio on the video cut out and then we lost the video feed but a little history on why I did this about a year or so ago I got a shipment from Live Aquaria of a wrasse that I really wanted and a couple pieces of coral and when I got the shipment the bags were incredibly cold and nothing in the bags really looked all that healthy. So my son suggested at the time that we take a temperature of the water. The water was between 67 and 69 degrees in the bags. And the salinity was only 1.20, which in a fish-only tank might not be so bad, but the water in the coral bags was the same salinity. Eventually what happened you know, during the acclimation process, we lost one of the fish, and then several days later, we lost another one of the fish. Live Aquaria definitely has one of the best guarantees in the business, but I think it's important that we follow science, you know, where, when we can and where we can. So if we knew or know a starting point and we know where we have to go, as far as acclimating a coral or a fish, I think that's important. And I think the, the whole, you know, let's acclimate for a period of time or let's acclimate for a quantity of water, I think that's a good idea. And definitely we've been doing that for years, but I think it might be better at this point in time to look at matching the water that's in the bag to the water in the tank or getting it as close as possible. So hopefully this made you guys think about the way you acclimate your corals and fish. Um, I thank you for watching. I'm sorry for the cutout of the, of the audio and the video and hopefully I'll be getting you some pictures shortly with some actinic light on the tank of everything that's in it. Thanks again. Thanks for your support. Please feel free to share my page, like it, or comment. Thanks.